five. Okay, today is review day. It is nine, twelve, nineteen. Okay, so number one, graph function and its parent function. So it's parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and get my graph paper out. Number one, I'm going to graph f of x is equal to parentheses x minus four squared minus nine. Okay, I can do that. And that says and its parent function. Well, that's easy. Hopefully everybody can do this. Shouldn't be too bad. Like that, like that, like that. And I know that the vertex of this, the vertex is at the point positive 4, negative 9. Right? So I'm going to go 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And since it's a regular parabola, I'm just going to do my 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, right? 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. From my vertex, I go over 1, up 1, 2, 2 squared is 1, 2, 3, 4. Am I going too fast? And I go back to my vertex. If I go over 3, 3 squared is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And of course, it's symmetrical. Okay, um, and there it is. Now, let me show you also something else. This is what Isaac likes to do. Isaac's not here today, but I'm recording, so hi, Isaac. Here's something Isaac likes to do, and if, if it helps you, I mean, I want whatever you can do to help you, right? So if I put in the calculator, here's what Isaac likes to do. I'll go parentheses. He'll go x subtract 4 squared subtract 9. He'll graph it, but he like, Isaac likes the table. So if you go to the table... Then you got all the points right there. You guys see that in your table? So you can just go to your table and you can get all your points from your table. Is that easy? Isn't that a nice way to graph? Okay. Anyway, um, so the parent function is regular old y equals x squared. And the parent function, we need both, which is the regular parabola, right? There's my y equals x squared. Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Very good. Okay. Number two. All right. Number two says, let g of x be reflected over the x-axis and a vertical stretch by one half, followed by a translation of five units up and one to the right of the graph of the absolute value. Now, be careful, because on the last test, I gave you a different function on the review sheet that I gave you on the test, right? So read the question. If the question is x squared, then it's x squared. The review sheet is the absolute value. Okay. So, all right. We're just going to go g of x equals. Now, we're going to have a stretch of 1 half. So I'm going to put a 1 half right here. Absolute value, okay? Followed by a absolute value of x. Start there, okay? There's my stretch. Got my 1 half there. Absolute value of x. So then, followed by a translation, 5 units up, and 1 to the right. 1 unit to the right, we're going to do the opposite. I'm going to go subtract 1, absolute value, and then followed by a translation of 5 up, okay? Now, got one more thing, which makes it a little bit tricky. We're going to be careful, okay? One more thing. I'm going to have reflection over the x-axis, okay? That makes the y negative. That makes the y. Or, in this case, it's going to make the g of x negative, okay? So the g of x is negative. Let's bring the negative over. So bring the negative over, I'm going to have g of x is equal to a negative one-half. That negative does not go inside. Negative one-half, x minus one, but it can go to the five, minus five. If I did a real rough sketch of it, which I will, so I can just kind of get an idea of what it looks like. It's going to look something like this. I'm going to be at 1, negative 5. So it's going to be here at 1, negative 5, right? So if I want the domain, how wide is my graph? How, what's the domain? How wide is, the, how wide is this graph? All real yeah, x equals all real numbers. And that's my symbol for all real numbers. And if you want to write all real numbers, that's fine with me, okay? And then what's the range? What's the starting height? What's the height y of this? Is less than or equal to 
less than or equal to negative 5. You guys agree? It starts at higher than negative 5. So y is less than or equal to negative 5. Nice job, Caden. Thumbs up. Am I not? Am I going slowly enough? Okay, shift it up. Three, write an equation of the line in, in intercept form. Okay, so first of all, let's figure out what the slope of this is. Looks like I'm going to go, slope is going to be 600 minus 200 over 1 minus 5. And the slope should be negative because it's going downhill. I'll say it again. The slope should be negative because it's going downhill. I'll say it one more time. The slope should be negative because it's going down, right? So I'm going to get a 400 over a negative 4, but that's just going to be a negative 100, right? So my slope is m equals negative 100, okay? Now, I'm not sure where it goes through. Sure looks like it's probably 6. It might looks like it's 600, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 700 maybe? Seven. Probably is, but let's check it. Let's make sure. So how do we do the math? We're going to use our y equals our mx plus b, right? Put my negative 100 here. And I can pick either point, but I'm probably going to pick my 1 and 600 because I like the number 1. Either point, right? I can pick either point. That's an x, that's a y, so I'll go 600 equals negative 100 times 1 plus b. Add 100, b's got to be 700. You guys agree with that? So my answer, y equals negative 100 x plus 700. How many? There's Isaac. Good man. All right. Right? How am I doing? Okay, not going too fast. Isaac. Okay. Slide it up. All right, now I'm going to need to use a separate sheet of paper because I need more work. But a parabola has a vertex at negative 6, negative 12, and passes through 0, 24. So let me go ahead and do that on a separate sheet of paper because never, it's never going to fit here. So let's see if I can do number 4 on this piece of paper. Okay, so vertex. So let's start off with y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, right? Vertex form, start with your vertex formula. And then what am I going to do with it? Well, this is a vertex, so that's my h, and that's my k, and that's my x, and that's my y value, okay? So I'm going to put my negative 24 in for y. I don't know a. I'm going to put my neg I put my zero, sorry, my zero in for x minus my h, which is my negative six plus k, and my k is a negative twelve. Okay, so I just plug my y value in, plug my x value in, I plug my h, and I plug my k. All right. If I simplify this, I get a negative twenty-four equals a times a positive six squared minus twelve. Right. Hey, I think we did this on our warm-up, didn't we? It's the exact same problem. Uh, I'm going to go plus 12, plus 12, and I'm going to negative 12 equals a 36a, right? Divide by 36, and I get a to equal negative one-third, because I just reduce, right? If you don't reduce, I won't count it wrong, but it's better to reduce. You guys okay with that? If you left it as negative 12, 36, of course I would take it, but please try to reduce. If you can't reduce, just leave it, okay? It's the right number. So my answer is y equals a negative one-third times a x plus 6 squared minus 12. This is getting easy, isn't it? You guys are getting good at this. Kahoot was a little shaky, but this is better, huh? All right. Number five. All right, matrix A is my three, five, four, five, two, three, six, three, four. Matrix B is my thirteen, negative nine, and negative eight. What I want to get in my calculus is this A inverse times b, right? Okay, so let me grab my calculator. We'll start putting that in. Okay, so again, go to matrix. So 
I'm gonna go to my matrix. Uh, matrix, second. Matrix, can you guys see that? Get the over there like that. There you can see that maybe. Right there, that's not too bad, okay. Alright. Maybe I should make it a little bit brighter. I don't know if I can while it's recording. No, nope, it won't. Okay, so let's put it in names. Go to edit and three by three. So we're gonna go three, enter, five, enter, four, enter, enter, two, enter, three, enter, six, three, four, right? So put all the numbers in, don't push clear. Because oh, no wait. No, no, you wait, you wait. You need to learn no, you need to learn this. So I'll push quit. Okay, matrix B. Okay, matrix. B, we're going to edit B, okay, 3 by 1, and we're going to go 13, negative 9, negative 8, right? Okay, and we'll quit. Don't push clear, push quit. And then we got to put our A inverse, right? So we're going to put our matrix A inverse times matrix B, right? We agree? Boom. So I've got my answers are X. Y and Z, right? My answers are X, Y, and Z. So my answer happens to be a negative 3 for X, 6, and negative 2. Because it's a point, it's a three dimensional point, okay? Slide that over. Yes? So if you did not get that answer, if you did not get that answer, then you've got to go back and check to make sure you put things in correctly, okay? Because I think you guys, I think everybody knows how to do it, right? It's just a matter of if you put a number in wrong or in the wrong place, you might get the wrong answer, right? Okay. Six. Jay, you got to wait till I'm done. I, I know you want to see this. I know you want to see this, Jay. I know you're like, Mr. Davies, I've got to see this so I can do really well on the test tomorrow, okay? Okay, number six. All right. So I'm going to put six in my graph paper. i got to graph that so I can get my ruler out. Draw my lines. All right. All right. And let's see what I have. So I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to my vertex. My vertex. Is at negative 3, negative 2, right? It's half as tall. It's half as tall. So it's a 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. It's just half as tall, right? So for the vertex, if I go over 1, I'm going to go up a half. If I go over 2, instead of going up 4, I'm going to go up just half of 4, which is 2. Go over 3, I'm going to go half as tall as 3, half as tall as 9 which is four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. And then, of course, it's symmetrical, right? That there, that there, and that is right there. Boom. Okay, thumbs up. Does that make sense? Now, I, got, I need to find some things. So first of all, I know the vertex. It's easy, okay? I already listed the vertex. The line of symmetry, well, I'm going to draw that in, but the line of symmetry is right Boom, right down the middle, right? So the line of symmetry is a line. It is x equals. So the line of symmetry, the line of symmetry is x equals negative 3, right? x equals negative 3. It just goes right down the middle, okay? I also need to find where it's increasing and decreasing. So here's the key. At x equals negative 3 is the bottom, right? At x equals negative 3 is the bottom. So it goes up from there. So increasing is from x is greater than negative 3. Decreasing is where it's going down. Is from x is less than negative 3. You're almost done. We're cruising, huh? How's that? Without graphing. Oh, sure. I totally agree. You can get it. I agree with you. Yep. Okay. Turn the page. 
Autumn, you're totally right. All right. Seven. Okay, a bridge builder in town plans to construct a suspension bridge over the Wenatchee River. The curve of the cable being formed will model the equation. So it's kind of like this, right? You've got a, should be like a parabola, right? Does that make sense? Suspension bridge, right? So we want to find at X where the height of the cable is close to the bridge. So that's right there. That's the vertex, right? That's the vertex. So let's use our negative B over 2A. So if X equals A negative, negative 0.2 divided by 2 times 0 0.002, okay? And I'm just going to use my calculator. Okay, 0.2 divided by 0 0.004. And I get 50, okay? X equals 50, okay? So that means right here, is 50 feet. So the bridge is probably 100 feet long, okay? Makes sense? The bridge is probably 100 feet long if that's 50 right there, okay? And what's that height? Well, plug it in, right? Plug it in. If you want to find out what the height is, we just plug it in. For x, I'm going to let my calculator do that, 0 0.002 times 50 squared minus 0.2 times 50 plus 60 I get 55 feet, so the height is 55 feet. How am I doing? Good? All right. Yes. No, you can always ask. Okay, number eight. Now I'm trying to get through this so that I can get the film done. But number eight, the table shows the number of toy bears. So this is, this is the price. So think about this. It's a carnival, right? If the price is really low, we'll sell a lot of bears, right? But we won't make a lot of money because our bears are priced low, right? If our bears are priced really high, we won't sell very many bears, but our price is really high, right? So there's that price somewhere in between where we make the most amount of money, right? Because if it's too low, we'll sell a ton, but we'll run out and, we won't, and we'll lose money. Does that make sense? So we've got to find the perfect price. So what do we do? Well, let's do our stat, right? Let's do our stat button. Stat, edit, clear, clear, three, four, five, six, seven, all right? And 112 bears, 125,000 bears, 132,000 bears, 133. 1,000 bears, 128,000 bears, okay? We try to find the quad. Yes, so what does it say? Um, find the quad. Yeah, who said that? Totally right. So how do we know we're looking for the quad? Right there, right? And it is. So it makes sense that it, it does go down and comes back up, right? You price these bears at $100 a bear, nobody's going to buy them. I mean, they're like little toy bears, right? So, I mean, it's got to be a quadrat. If you price for a penny... We'll sell a ton, but we won't make any money. Does that make sense? We'll lose money, okay? So it's got to be quadratic. So I go to my, back to stat, back to calculate. Let's go to my quad reg, and we'll calculate. We're going to equation. So I got a y equals my negative 3x squared plus 34x plus 37, right? Now, Best price, well, if it is a parabola, right, if the model's a parabola, the best price would be at the vertex, right? So let's see if we can find the vertex, okay? So the vertex would be negative B over 2A, a negative 34 over A, 2 times a negative 3, right? Can you just plug in the equation in the calculator and just let it do that? Um, when you want to find the... Price at nine, yes. And I haven't done that. Actually, Isaac, thank you. I jumped ahead of myself. I got to go back, right? What is it? Is it one hundred? Yeah. Or not? Not the negative two b over two a. Oh, okay. This is yeah. This is five point six six. So that's the price I want, and I did. I just skipped it. You guys are right. I skipped number nine, but Austin did number nine for me. Hopefully, I'm not confusing you. But nine, you just plug it in. You guys agree? Austin, what'd you get for an answer? 100. 
So that's 100 in terms of this would be 1,000, 100,000 bears. If you don't put the thousands, I wouldn't mark it wrong, but it does talk about in terms of thousands of bears, right? In thousands, right? And then the best price, $5.66 is the best price. Okay. Okay, nine. Okay. Almost done. So, I got a policy change. So let's see, g of x is my new equation. What am I going to do? I'm going to change. We're going to make a policy change. We're going to charge eight more dollars or add it on, and the total reimbursement is multiplied by 130. Okay? So let's take our equation and let's add eight. Okay? So I'm going to have a 0.45m plus 13, right? So let's add eight, and then we're going to multiply that reimbursement by $1.03. So then we're going to multiply this by 1.30. Okay? I added eight. Because I eight more dollars, or added then the total reimbursement is multiplied by 1.3. So my new equation is going to be, I don't know, 0.45 times 1.3, and I get an answer of about 0 0.858, 0 0.585, I think I said that wrong, plus what's 13 times, and I get an answer of 16.9, okay? Last question. What's the total reimbursement for 195 miles? How do you do that? Easy. How do you do that? Easy. Easy. What do you do? Plug it in. Plug it in. So let's take our 195 and plug it in. So G of 195.585. Anybody have the answer yet? And that's in terms of dollars, right? There you go. Okay, now, I have a homework assignment.